A zero-click, non-authentication exploit in one of the internet's biggest content platforms. One crafted request, and you're executing commands on the server, as root. But here's the part that matters. This wasn't a one-time hit. It didn't stop here. This was only part one. So lock in, because some bugs don't die, they evolve. It started quiet, a silent floor hiding in the core of millions of websites. And the target, Drupal, one of the internet's biggest CMSs, content management systems. It's the back end that powers websites, logins, articles, user management, all the behind the scenes work without touching raw code. Used by governments, universities, media organizations, even the White House. At the time, Drupal 7 was the backbone, and buried in the way it handled web requests was a bug. One that let attackers run their own database commands with a single crafted request. It was so serious, it scored a perfect CVSS score of 10, full control from the outside. This is CVE 2014-3704. They called it Drupal Geddon. It all came down to a small silent mistake, buried deep in how Drupal handled user input. Drupal had a built-in database API powering all the dynamic parts of the site. Login forms, comment boxes, search bars, Anytime someone typed something in, Drupal would build a database query behind the scenes to fetch your store information. But one part of that system, a function called expand arguments, wasn't validating inputs properly. That opened the door to a classic SQL injection, slipping your own commands into a query the system expects to be safe. Instead of just reading or storing harmless data, attackers could send a single crafted HTTP request and inject malicious commands, read data, change passwords, create admin users, even take over the whole system. And once word got out, it spread fast. Within hours of the patch being released, attackers had already reverse engineered it, figured out what was broken, and built working exploits. Automated scripts began sweeping the internet, scanning for vulnerable Drupal sites. Step one, the injection. It didn't start with a full-blown exploit, just a single web form, like a user registration, a comment section or a search bar on a Drupal 7 site. But behind the scenes, that form straight to the database and didn't check the input properly. Step two, database takeover. With admin rights, attackers could create new accounts, pull user tables or upload malicious files. Step three, remote execution. That file sat on the site, waiting to be triggered. Load it in a browser, and suddenly, the attacker is running system commands remotely. Step four, going deeper. Now a game on. Web shells, credential harvesting, pivoting to other machines. The CMS was just the entry point. It blew up the internet. Script kiddies were blasting auto-exploit tools from GitHub and forums. No need to understand SQL. Just run the script, and you were in. Then came the cybercrime crews. More organised, more dangerous. Planting web shells, backdooring servers, and stealing databases, backed with user info, credentials, and anything they could sell. And while no one officially named APT groups, researchers suspected they were watching. Then came the botnets. Hackers hard-coded Drupal Geddon into malware. Thousands of already infected machines turned into zombie scanners sweeping the internet for Drupal 7 sites. And when they found one, they fired off the exploit automatically. No hacker needed. Just malware doing damage at scale. Some went for quick profit with crypto miners, where it hijacks the CPUs to quietly mine cryptocurrency, draining resources and racking up power bills. But the more serious actors wanted persistence. They installed backdoors and remote access trojans, or rats giving them full control of the machine as if they were sitting right at the keyboard. Others planted keyloggers to steal admin credentials or quietly folded the compromised server into the botnet so to scan for and attack more Drupal sites. And some infections went even deeper, turning those compromised sites into command and control hubs used to coordinate new waves of attacks across the internet. These were long-term compromises built to stay hidden, spread wider and stick around. While there's no official figure, industry analysts 
estimate the fallout for Drupal Geddon likely cost organizations 100 to 200 million dollars globally because thousands of production sites got hit, many in government, media and education, and downtime for those organizations isn't cheap. Some are forced to rebuild servers, re-secure infrastructure, or handle data breaches quietly behind the scenes. And since a lot of the victims never went public, the true cost was probably much higher. It didn't hit mainstream headlines, not right away. But in the security world, it spread like wildfire. Forums lit up, admins scrambled, and the Drupal security team didn't hold back. Their warning was blunt. Assume your site is at risk if you didn't patch within seven hours of disclosure. Seven hours, that's all you had, before attackers were already breaking in. Within 48 hours, cybersecurity firms were reporting mass exploitation, compromised systems, and botnets chained the exploit into automated malware campaigns. Behind the scenes, blue teams were in full-on response mode, patching, scanning logs, restoring backups, and trying to stay ahead of the chaos. For most regular users, it was like it wasn't even there. The bug was discovered by security researcher Stefan Horst. He reported it on October the 15th, 2014, and the Drupal security team released the patch and public advisory. That kind of same day patch, that's rare. Most bugs get reported privately, patched quietly, then released weeks later. But here, Drupal moved fast, and they had to. You didn't have days. You had hours before attackers started breaking in. The Drupal team's fix did one thing, but it was the only thing that mattered. To stop trusting untrusted input. They added proper sanitization to the vulnerable function, filtering out anything dangerous before it ever touched the database. Quotes, semicolons, injection tricks, all stripped out. Instead of treating form fields like trusted code, Drupal finally treated them for what they were, user data. Drupal Geddon was a wake-up call. First, even trusted, widely used platforms like Drupal can carry critical flaws. Second, response time matters. And third, SQL injection wasn't just an old bug from the early 2000s. It was still very real, very dangerous, and still hiding in modern, high-profile systems. Patching policies tightened. Organizations shifted to daily vulnerability scans instead of weekly. Security teams leaned harder on web application firewalls to filter malicious inputs before they ever hit the server. But the biggest shift was mindset. People started paying attention to the core cool software running behind the scenes. The CMS backbones powering thousands of websites. Tools of deep access, total control, and trusted by default. The kind of software you never think about until it breaks. We're still vulnerable today. More than 10 years later, the tools are better, awareness is higher, but the cracks are still there. So a quiet bug turned global breach, but this wasn't the end. Drupal had another crack waiting in the code, a different bug, same system, and the attackers came back for round two. Like that scene in Jurassic Park, where they think the chaos is over, and then you see the egg start to crack. Drupal Geddon wasn't done. Part two, coming soon.